I'm Jimmy Hendrick, and this is the college trick on Empower Your Pattern. Did you know that there are success patterns to help you receive more, to help you live a better and extraordinary life? Well, I'm Jimmy Hendrick. I am a success, confidence, and thrive coach. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And if you come with me, I will show you these success patterns. Let's go. Okay, we're going off the beaten path just a little bit. Just a little bit. I was inspired by a podcast by uh, Jody Moore. And as someone who has been in and out of college, really, since he was 21 years old back in the fall of 1991, I can kind of sympathize with what I feel like college students need. Now, you may say, well, Jimmy, you don't know what these generation... Millennials and Generation Z going to college. You don't, you don't know what they're going to need. No, but I mean, I may not know everything from a generational standpoint, but I can tell in general by someone who's went to college. A lot of college students, they're looking for some sort of approval, acceptance, guidance. And so, you know, they believe that they can look to some of the older people around them, um, the leaders and the like. And it's through those leaders that um, they look to to get their their cues, you know, as as mentors, as as good friends, uh, parents, and the like. And, you know, I have to say this as a college student. Once you let that person down, it's hard to get that trust back up again. And and now listen to me, listen to me. You parents out there, you leaders out there that are impacted by college students, listen to me. If you don't give them the cues that they need for success, what's going to happen? They're going to go to their peers. They may go to the reactive culture. Okay, some peers may be good for them. Don't get me wrong. But it's also my firm belief that college students, sometimes they need a little guidance. I started college when I was 21 in the fall of 1991, and I received my bachelor's in political science in the spring of 1978. And there was a season in my life, and I'm just I'm just being as as bluntly but as kindly as I can. There was a season in my life when I felt like I really needed, you know, a firm hand, a kind hand, but a firm hand to be my mentor and and guide me. And if we don't if we don't give that to them, if we don't give them to them. So I call myself a success coach. I see myself ministering to some of these college kids. If we don't give it to them, where are they going to get it from? The culture. Let me tell you something. The reactive culture has been really budding the past 30 plus years. And the one thing I do know is this. It's rampant. And it can teach some things that are contrary to the values that you, you want your kids to have. You say, well, Jimmy, how could you possibly know what that's like uh, in, in college? You don't know. And you may say, well, how do you know? How do you know? Because I had the same thing happen to me. I had the same thing happen to me. December 1994. It was Christmas. My grandmother wouldn't say it. My family wouldn't wouldn't tell me. But I had a feeling that she she was dying at some point. And I just I just refused to accept it. And I was at the point where 
I had felt that the mentors that I looked up to in, in life at that point had let me down. And, and, and I didn't care. My mother warned me not to room with Charlie Nation. But I was so lonely and dangerous and, 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 and I was so lonely and angry and dep angry and depressed, I didn't I didn't care. So I let John Nation room with me. Uh famous last mistake. You may say but, but why do you say that? Why do you say that? That's that's crazy. How could you possibly say that? Because I learned a lot of things from his observations of the culture that I wouldn't even say on the air with Nick's company, except for maybe a few, few things. You could question your your um, um, sex, sexuality, you know. You can de you can delay your your development. Pretty much anything goes. The the friends I hung around with that spring semester of nineteen ninety five. The the philosophy was anything goes. And other than those friends, I just Charlie and I just kept to ourselves. And so that's why I say, you know, parents, if you see that your kids. Are going down the wrong track in, in Congress in, in college seriously. Offer them a big enough carrot. You can get on the phone and say, "Hey, I care." But but I need you. I, I need to get you away from this part of the culture. And, and get you exposed to to some of the right things again. But there was so much that during spring break of nineteen. 95, I was like, I was like a broken man. I went to see my best friend Keith that week. And he and his family looked at me and I said, J Jimmy, you don't even look the same. It's like your countenance is falling. What, what's, what's up? What's wrong? I said, my grandmother may be dying and I'm very unhappy. And they were suggesting such things as, you know, getting, getting back into church and and back at that time, for some reason, I didn't want to hear it. It was it was sad. I was angry at Heavenly Father because my because my grandmother was dying, and I was already taking hits. You know, I was already taking hits and clues from our reactive culture, especially through Charlie Nation. However, in May of 1995, Charlie Nation dropped out of Texas Tech. Because he simply wouldn't apply himself. You know, it being the first college he ever went to. He never really applied to himself. He misspent most of his time, you know. I'm not talking about alcohol alcohol party. But you know, kind of like a... Well, you know, heavy metal music party and, you know... And <laughs> stuff that's not meant to be said in, in mixed company. So when I came back from that particular semester, it was like it was like I was a broken man, and I think there was a couple of times my grandmother, my, my, my mother, was the first one that said, "Hey, you need to get a grip on yourself." It's it's, it's kind of like she was saying, "James, I love you, but I'm not going to let you stay that way. I'm not going to let you stay that way." And when I came back to Texas Tech that fall for my first senior year, I had three of them. But one thing I was craving, you know, was just a slight guiding hand from like a father figure. But I didn't know how to get it. I started going back to church, taking cues from more friends with a less active bent. And that was a semester I met my friend, uh, Kevin, who also gave me some strong moorings, you know, study more than you're trying to look for a good time all the time, you know. 
but not having that guidance. And I'm not saying that parents, you need to run your, your college kids' life. But if they come to you asking for advice, okay, maybe you don't know the answer. But maybe you can point to someone on, on their campus or um, in their sphere of influence. Get, get interested in your college kid's life. Because I'm telling you, if, if, if you don't give them clues, help them find people to give them clues to, to succeed, then what's going to happen is they're going to give into the reactive culture. Needless to say, my grandmother died that November of 1995. And by December 1995, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I was, uh, I think it was a Saturday night, I was up in my dorm, you know, trying to study for my mass communications law class. And I called my friend Brad, the realtor. And, okay, I know sometimes I down Brad for some of the reactive things that he did, but this one thing he said that night made all the sense in the world. He said, Jimmy, have you accepted Jesus Christ? Have you have you surrendered your life to Christ again? Let me tell you something. That meant all the difference in the world. Because if they're, if they're not going to get guidance from Christian men mentors and, and Christian parents, they're going to get guidance from their peers in the culture. Now, I hope you enjoy listening to Empower Your Pattern People and know. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Become a citizen of the Pattern Realm. This is Jimmy Hendricks saying until next time, choose, act, and pursue happiness. God bless you. Take care.